friend Doug Lawrence. Doug and I met on Rocco, like like everyone I've been <laughs> interviewing. Everybody, pretty yeah, much, yeah. You know? Pretty much, like nine out of ten is met yeah. on Rocco, um, which was I started in '93, but you were already there. So when did you start? Also, uh, it wasn't or? that much sooner than, yeah. than that. It was that year. I mean, it was definitely earlier mm -hmm. in that year, like January. I, I remember just auditioning really hard to get that job. So it was, ah. it was a very, I it finished. Took a while? Yeah. Well, it, 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 I didn't know what was going on, whether that show was happening. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell. Uh, Linda Zeminski had told me to talk to the guys over at at Rocco, she goes, I think you'd fit in with those guys. Because so I was how, trying to sell a show. So how, oh yeah, so how did you get it? How, how did you get into Rocco? Um, that was, the, it was when exactly that. I was on Ren and Stimpy yeah. as, a, as an animator, oh, or as a key, right. key Ren frame, Stimpy, yeah, yes. Ren and Stimpy guy. So mm -hmm. I started there, I was this big. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you guys can't see that on the podcast. Uh, yeah. Or no, yeah. you can't hear. Yeah. Here it is. Um, and, yeah, I did that for like a short, like a year, and then um, I met Jerry Beck while I was at yeah. while I was at uh, Rocco. Mm -hmm. uh, no, sorry, Ren and Stimpy. Yeah. And he saw that I was really ambitious and that I was I was trying to make my own shows. Mm -hmm. He saw the things I had on my what desk. What was he doing there? Was he was just always he wanted to be in the, in on the community, and mm -hmm. he, he was mm -hmm. he knew John and he knew. Um, I think Vincent knew him too, Waller. Mm -hmm. There were some other people, but they, I think they knew him and he was just always wanting to keep his hand, mm -hmm. you know, his feet dipped in yeah. animation, whatever was hot, what was going on. And so he was, you know, of course, Ren and Stimpy was like oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the big, I was trying, I, I mean, I had to audition for that myself. Yeah. I, I, I spent a lot of time trying to get that uh, oh. show when I moved here. Yeah. That's all I wanted to do was to work, work on that show. So um, I did, it all ended. Like with mm -hmm. way sooner than I thought it was going to, because I thought I'm on a hit show now. This is, you know, going to be fucking awesome, right? <laughs> uh, it's going to be good. No, and then all I did, it was great for the time I was there and doing, you know, I mean, learned a lot of things, of course. Um, and then that got me to uh, Jerry, and then Jerry introduced me to Linda Zeminski. Because he mm -hmm. was good friends with her, and she said you should, she, he saw shows I was trying to pitch. I was trying yeah. to work up pitches, and I, since I knew him, I was asking him, "Is this right? Is this the way I'm supposed to be mm -hmm. pitching stuff?" And so uh, he didn't know. No, yeah. he knew. Yeah. <laughs> he knew. He knew <laughs> enough, you know. But he was trying to help me uh, uh, arrange stuff, uh -huh. and so he introduced me to Linda. I had Linda come over to my apartment, which I'd been, you know, not, you know, I was only there a short period mm -hmm. of time at that point. And she came in and saw storyboards I had done for a project I was working on. And she said, this is all great. I'm not going to buy, I wouldn't buy this show. She says, because of, you know, she went through lists of, th of yeah. things that she Kids, says, it's yeah. for, yeah, there's, because it was, yeah, I was like, it was like a college project. That so was Linda was one on. of the, like, heads of Nickelodeon, of Nickelodeon with at the time. Harrington and Linda with Mary and, and uh, uh, Vanessa Coffey. Yeah. yeah. And so Linda saw my stuff, said, I don't want the show you just showed me, but I want to hire you. You should be working on one of the shows. Mm -hmm. So she showed me the new shows they were working on, and one of them was Rocco. And she says, and luckily, she goes, the other ones that she showed me, she says, I think they're going to be in New York. And I said, mm -hmm. well, I just moved from New York. I just moved yeah. from New Jersey. So, you know, what's happening? You know, and she, she says, I think Rocco would work for you. She goes, I think you get along with the creator on mm -hmm. that show. So I went to work, go work on this is that silly old story that I don't, yeah, I never tell anymore. But <laughs> I told it then, which was, I went to the show and uh, called up because she said, you know, yeah. I recommend you call this, call this, here's the number, here's mm -hmm. the guy you call, here's, here's Brad Gunther, call yeah. him up, he's the producer. <clears throat> so I called him up and I didn't realize that I would neglected to tell him that Linda Zeminski told me to call. Mm -hmm. I just called up and said, I'm looking for work. Uh, I was told to call, you know, blah, blah. in other words, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't divulging enough, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so he goes, all right, come on in, you know, come in for, for, cause we're just staff, staffing up. Yeah. So I went in, met him. He liked me. I brought all those storyboards that I'd shown Linda Zeminski to mm -hmm. the meeting, which was this pile of stuff. Joe saw it and we walked into the office together. He looked at it. He goes, <laughs> and you know, you knowing Joe, you know, he goes, you're telling stories with pictures. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and I said, that's right, I am. And he goes, he goes, no, you're good at telling stories with pictures. And I said, I said, oh, okay, I get, all right, and now, now I get what you mean. Thanks, you know, because I'm just like, oh, you know. And I just wanted to get a job in there, so I got hired right away. I mean, he, he oh. said to me, he says, you're telling, he goes, he goes, uh, if it's up to me, is it up to me? I, I, I'm hiring you right now if it's up to me. And he looked at Brad Gunther and he goes, yeah, yeah, whatever, you know. So I said, okay, great, I got the job, you know. So, so I went, uh, you know, and I was a storyboard artist for, I think, one episode. I th I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't know anybody. I didn't know, you know, I certainly didn't know Joe. I didn't know you. Yeah, Everybody yeah. was new. Mm -hmm. You know, we just all coming in on this, this thing. And I did one board, I think it was called Sand in Your Navel. It was with Roger Chieson from, mm -hmm. uh, from uh, Canada. Great animator, you know, mm -hmm. remember Roger? Yeah. Great, nice guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he, we were paired up to make a show. And so I slammed the show together and I did what came naturally to me, which was, in other words, that he said, do what you want to do. Like, here's the story, mm -hmm. but basically it's, Brocco's at the beach go, yeah. you know, do, do what, do what you think is right. Because if you don't like this, change it. You know, he mm -hmm. was, he was giving me, giving me some range, you know, which I thought was, uh, unusual and, but nice of him to, to, he wanted to, see, he probably wanted to see what I wanted to do. So what were you doing that on Ren and Stimpy or was it different on Ren and Stimpy? Ren and Stimpy was, yeah, Ren and Stimpy, I was strictly <coughs> a, a layout artist. Oh, I see. Yeah. <clears throat> so that one was more, um, very technical work, mm -hmm. you know, and different than, than me coming oh, up with yeah. ideas yeah, yeah. and stuff. So this was the first time someone said, yes, mm -hmm. this is what we were paying you <laughs> to yeah. write to come up and to come ideas. up with yeah. what happens in this, in this <laughs> fucking story. So I said, so I said, great. And I, I sat down to, to do it. And I, I remember uh, my wife calling me because we were just married and mm -hmm. moved out, you know, it all happened all at once. And it's, you know, nine o'clock and I'm not home yet. And she's like, she, and I'm, I'm, but I'm there at the desk <laughs> at work. No one's there. I got the lights on and I'm going crazy, uh, trying to come up with new things, you know, and just, just, and I, time just dissolved. I didn't know yeah. what time it was. Yeah. It was just dark. I didn't, I didn't yeah. know anything else. And I just, I went crazy because it was the first time somebody said you can do mm -hmm. what you want to do. And so I had too many ideas. I had too many things, but I was able to execute them in, mo in in a modular form, so you could just take things out. Oh, yeah. If you didn't want that, just take that out. So I got did that board, and then uh, Joe told me that the board at the time he he said this is he said that uh, everyone's excited about the show now. He says we did a couple of boards. He goes and everybody you know liked them or whatever. He said but you brought this gag thing which we weren't really doing the same way the way the, mm -hmm. the succession of gags blackout gags, mm -hmm. you know, Tex Avery stuff, which it was just what I grew mm -hmm. up with and it was what I couldn't wait to, to try to, to do yeah. on my own, you know, try to do updated versions of that stuff, mm -hmm. you know, things, you know, speaks to me now, you know, or, or then, you know, yeah. <laughs> in the nineties, but trying to not imitate Tex Avery, but do our own version of, course, you know, of that. Yeah, yeah. And so he said, because of that, and I remember Mary uh, Harrington coming down, she said, yeah, she goes, um, this is officially uh, this is what we were hoping the show would be, is this board you guys just did, you, you did. And I just went, oh my God. And they said, so uh, you're, you're promoted to director, which was like... Oh yeah, they made a difference between director and the storyboard. Right, so, right. Yeah. So they said, so what we want to do is separate you and Roger. You're going to mm -hmm. have your own unit and Roger will have his, mm -hmm. his thing. 